The Farmcast is a podcast sponsored by the Maryland Pharmacists Association. I'm your host, Aliyah Horton. I'm the executive director of MPHA. And in my role, I have the opportunity to meet so many fascinating people within Maryland and around the country that are engaged in the practice of pharmacy. They're stakeholders, they're innovators, collaborators, and advocates. And this is my opportunity to bring those conversations and experiences to you. And it's another way that MPHA is fulfilling its mission to strengthen the profession of pharmacy, advocate for pharmacists, and to promote excellence in pharmacy practice. My hope is that at the end of these conversations, you will leave informed, engaged, and connected to pharmacy and our Maryland pharmacy community. Welcome to the FarmCast. Uh, Today, we are talking with Mindy Smith. And Mindy is a pharmacist and vice president of professional affairs for Tabla Rasa Healthcare, or TRHC. In her role, Smith leads the advancement of increasing visibility and forging strong business relationships and influencing public policy by establishing formal formal partnerships with pharmacy and healthcare-related organizations. She formerly served as Vice President of Pharmacy Practice and Innovation for Prescribe Wellness, which I think many of our listeners know Prescribe Wellness really well. Um, And she also served as Executive Director of the APHA Foundation, as well as the um, CEO of the Arizona Pharmacy Alliance and Executive Director of the Wyoming Pharmacy Association. So, Mindy, welcome. Thank you. Nice to be here with you. Right. Uh, And there are several reasons why I wanted to talk to you, but I really think that your um, career has been very interesting. And I know we kind of have a little kismet because of your role as an executive director in two different states. So you really do understand the kind of work that that we do at MPHA and the role that pharmacy associations play in pharmacy practice and um, promoting the profession. And so I think you you get why we're doing this farm cast and get all the work um, that we do. And as I was thinking about our conversation, um, I do wanna talk about um, some of the work that you're doing and with some innovations in medication safety, but we know that there are, you know, thousands of pharmacy students that graduate every year. There are a lot of pharmacists in the workplace. And I really, like talking to people and highlighting people who have taken on what we call our kind of the non-traditional roles, but to really elevate folks who are using their pharmacy education to do other things in the industry to show that there really are um, opportunities across the board in, in business and in um, the nonprofit arena. So can you talk a little bit about your career tra- trajectory and kind of how you got to where you are? Yeah, yeah, I'd love to. Yeah, so I um, definitely took on a, a turn in my career that was unexpected. And anytime I mentor pharmacy students, um, I always tell them or advise them to always pay attention to new opportunities and don't be afraid to make a jump <laughs> into something that makes you a little uncomfortable even. Um, that, um, you know, grab a hold of that opportunity and go with it. So Uh, My story or my background, I practiced um, in community pharmacy. I'm from uh, the big state of Wyoming um, and uh, spent my time in community pharmacy, but also spent six years as a a health system pharmacist, worked inside the health of a a hospital, Um, even ran a um, a, a anti-COA clinic at the hospital with a pulmonologist and was ACLS certified and went to all the code blues and and was, you know, loved that work when moonlighted community pharmacy. But I was always involved even through pharmacy in pharmacy school. And, you know, after I graduated, uh, was always involved with the national and then the um, state pharmacy association. And I also had uh, mentors, bosses and leadership Wyoming's a small from a population size community and um, my relationships of, uh, with my colleagues and mentors, all were part of the Wyoming Pharmacy Association. It was almost as if, you know, if you aren't, what's, you know, why aren't you? 
And so my boss at the hospital um, in Cheyenne, Wyoming, capital of Wyoming, um, she was the president of the Wyoming Pharmacy Association at the time. And one, of the, one day she walked into the pharmacy and said, gosh, we're looking for a new executive director. And so, bless you. <laughs> Sorry. Allergy season. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Go ahead. Sorry. And she, um, she, I said, well, tell me more about that because I, I'm interested in that. And she was like, you are. And I said, well, yeah. I just, I have such a passion for the work. And as you mentioned in the beginning of what. Uh, collectively you can do to change the profession through the association if you work together to influence changes for not only the profession but ultimately for patient care mm -hmm. um, I love the ability to be able to make change and so um, it so happened that they gave me the job <laughs> as executive director okay. and so I worked full-time at the hospital and that was my part-time job, um, where it, you know really became another um, another full-time <laughs> job. <laughs> I know it did. <laughs> and not only that, but I loved the work, so I was so passionate about it. It was easy to just kind of take up my time. So I um I would literally work. I had such a great support system. I you know working at the hospital in downtown Cheyenne, about a two hundred bed hospital. I would. Uh, clock out and run, uh, go two blocks across the street to the state capitol and do you know the legislative lobbying committee work etc and then I would finish that and come back over clock back in and go back oh to my, my gosh my, to my, that is a supportive <laughs> environment for sure yeah so it was nice because I had colleagues and friends who would cover my shifts if I needed to go over and do whatever I needed to mm -hmm. so it was a really supportive environment and that's that's where I learned. I learned um, from my friends and colleagues in a really great support system in Wyoming to be able to um, um, uh, flourish in that role um, with Wyoming. Uh, we were able to pass the first immunization bill. Um, it didn't get passed when I was there, but it because of politics, but the next year they came back and they were able to get it through. Uh, and working with the colleges of pharmacy, as you know, the Department mm -hmm. of Health and the state and, and every, you know, the relationships that you can create to really make change and, and also advocate for the profession um, and make sure that, you know, pharmacists have a seat at the table. Absolutely. And that's where I got my beginning there. Um, as just as you were talking and I was, as, as you started mentioning those different entities, I do think it's so important. And I think this is something that sometimes the students miss is that one of the great reasons for being involved in the association is that you can start off very early um, building those relationships because the people who are in the association and active are the ones who are the employers. They're the ones that have the connections that can um, once they get to know you, um, can see um, your potential and where you can go and will help pave the way for other opportunities. And so, yeah, it's, it's uh, relationship building is so important. And I think sometimes people forget that even when you're working in a clinical type profession, a scientific, um, mm -hmm. you know, science-based profession, that you yeah. still need to build those relationships. And it's so important. 100%. I, you know, even, so another, um, piece of advice that I give students is that if you aren't there, as in, you know, again, with COVID, a little different with our virtual meetings, but literally the best conversations or advice that you have or opportunities that come up actually come out, come up uh, in the hallway conversations. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's not in, in the sessions and um, it's all about those relationship building and, and learning and being at the right place at the right time sometimes. Yeah, uh, and, these opportunities come up. So 100%. Yeah. And that's how you leverage these relationships to advocate for the profession as well. 100%. And, and that's really um, the primary reason why um, I really wanted to start this podcast for MPHA, because as you know, I see you all the time at the different national meetings, and we have great conversations, and there's so many people around. And as an executive director, when you're out there, you want to come back and tell everybody everything, but it's so hard to yeah 
because you've got to change the messaging for all the different audiences. <laughs> but this just gives a way for people to have sort of an insight into some of the conversations that we have and yeah. get to know um, one another. So, um, right. yeah, so thank you for that. And I think that's some great advice um, for the students and good backup. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, for the so what, what that did is I, I had such a, I love the work of the association so much that I uh, the opportunity um, and position came up in, in Arizona. And so Arizona had just um, combined their health system and community pharmacy associations right. together. Mm -hmm. And one of the caveats um, of that uh, reorganization is that their new executive director would be a pharmacist. Mm -hmm. And so I had an, an advantage there. And with um, working in Wyoming for three years, I applied and ended up getting that getting that position. So since 2000, I moved to um, Phoenix in uh, I think December 2005, started work in, uh, at Arizona, in Arizona at, in 2006. And that was the last time I actually practiced mm -hmm. as a pharmacist because I actually worked in Arizona um, full-time exec. So um, yeah, so I was in Arizona for five years um, and jumped, I lo loved, loved being um being able to focus and really drive same thing in wyoming and replicate in arizona to to represent the profession uh, really some, make some great changes in legislation did some really fun work there and um, i have so many friends and colleagues um, that uh, i still keep in touch with today um, from um, being in arizona so yeah so i did that my that's where my career turned i never would have thought that um, i really liked practicing as well uh, and um, so now I'm just a, you know, I would say the family pharmacist only. <laughs> and, uh, stay in my guardrails. Um, but I um, love that work. And then I also, that um, led to an opportunity uh, when I got married, met my husband. And I, was, I wasn't sure if you were going to bring that up because I do know the, the Arizona connection. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I, I probably would still be there if I wouldn't have uh, fell in love. So, <laughs> <It's all good. laughs> so yeah, so I moved to DC and um, had an opportunity to, to work for APHA Foundation for, for four years. So I spent 12 years of my career of that, you know, path from going from practicing in pharmacy to working for the profession and, and advocacy and even the foundation is really about increasing visibility and showcasing um, models of practice for the profession. Uh, I spent 12 years of my career in that work. So yeah. And, and now you're in the for-profit side yeah. of yeah. still supporting um, the industry. Mm -hmm. And so and I know that you've been in a couple of different areas. And so I kind of came in uh, when I started MPHA it was 2015. So I don't know if that was like where that was in the tra trajectory of prescribed wellness, but I knew it was around and it was kind of a big thing that was percolating work percolating <laughs> through the industry. Yeah. Uh, like we had to have several conversations um, for me to get it. <laughs> All right, that's how it works. I'm not a pharmacist. And so, you know, you have to work through that. But I think that's it's it's great that you're you're continuing to help the profession. And so this is the other reason why I wanted to talk to you is um we um full disclosure, MPHA now has a partnership with um with Tabla Rasa on um a, a I'll call it a product, uh, and we'll get into more details called Medwise. And um, the thing that really pushed me to, you know, bring this to our board, and they were excited about it, is that um, when I saw the presentation at NASPA, the response, like, I've never seen, like, pharmacists sort of geek out over, <laughs> over something. And so there was really, like, this level of excitement, and, like, this is fantastic, this is going to change the game. And... You know, when you're you're in the trenches, um, you don't often get that in pharmacy because you know, as it, as as the association, we're always we're fighting everybody in the legislature um, for different practice advancements. And so, for something like this, for people to really like, oh my gosh, this is fantastic. So, I'm going to turn it over to you 
to explain a Medwise and yeah. why it's so awesome. And yeah, um, yeah just take it away and, and share a little bit about that. So absolutely, I um, uh, appreciate the opportunity. We really appreciate the partnership that we have with you. We have um, eight states so far um, that we've been able to, I, I tell, um, I, I say, gosh, I'd have 20 more if I could just meet all of you face to face, but it's so hard with COVID that we all, you know, within every, all your priorities have been focused on, on COVID and, and rightly so in helping patients and pharmacists. So we, again, appreciate the opportunity to work with, with MPA and the state associations. We are working hard to really uh, get the word out that we have a clinical decision support tool that was like none other that's on the market today. Nothing like it exists in the market that really takes and uh, takes the knowledge of a pharmacist and the expertise that we have going to school, learning pharmacokinetics, pharmacodynamics, pharmacogenomics, everything on how um, medication is metabolized. And today, the legacy systems, um, and my analogy is, um, think of a, a horse versus a car. <laughs> We're working with a, a horse right now, um, where we uh, have these systems that are antiquated, where literally, if a pharmacist needs to look at competitive inhibition, they have to pull up, you know, 10 different PDFs of studies and figure out what to do. What we've done is we've taken the science uh, and put it all together into one uh, matrix that displays all of this information as a simultaneous multi-drug analysis for the pharmacist so that they have all of this information right at their fingertips in one screen. So, you know, looking at from an advancement in technology um, in anything, in any sector, this is an advanced advancement of technology for pharmacists, specifically for pharmacists that can bring to life and allow them to really see under, under the hood of the car mm -hmm. what's going on with that patient uh, to make then changes to their drug therapy to optimize um, not only drug therapy, but um, uh, prevent adverse drug events. So just to um, back up a little bit um, from uh, the, our uh, co-founders of our company are also two pharmacists. Right. So, uh, and we have uh, hundreds of pharmacists that work for Tabula Rasa, which is really um, from, as a pharmacist uh, working for a pharmacist centric, right? Going from, I don't feel like I left, you know, I haven't left the profession at all because you I have not. work on behalf of pharmacists and now I, get, I work with pharmacists and we're trying to really change the system, really, honestly, um, change the healthcare system because every single person deserves to have the right medication and the right medication therapy. And being adherent to the wrong medication is the worst thing you could do for a patient. So uh, working with partners like you to elevate um, the opportunity that we have um, to um, bring to pharmacists um, Medwise, um, a technology tool that they that will um, allow them to take care of their patients like they've never been able to before. Um, that's what we want to do. And I can go into more details on, on everything with Medwise, but it really is a game changer. For yeah, it's, yes. And on that, I know you have, um, so you know that we have a relationship um, with the University of Maryland's P3 program. Mm -hmm. And I understand that they're all now certified Medwise consultants or, or what is the term? And can you explain that? Because that's one of the things that MPHA yeah. will be offering. And I guess other states that the enter in these agreements mm -hmm. do the same. Yeah, so to, to before we um, call it turn on and, and um, you know, hand you the tool, we wanna make sure that you um, as a pharmacist, are able to un read the tool on how it works, what it's telling you, um, so that you're able to essentially use it, right? What's all the buttons and um, what, what are we displaying for you? So before we give you access, we um, 
part of the um, what comes along with the tools that you go through a certificate training course and become a certified Medwise advisor. Advisor. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. And so um, it's a 16 hours, all ACPE accredited program, but we essentially for a pharmacist right out of school or like me who went through the program who haven't, hasn't practiced for two, since 2005, I was able to get through, you know, it gives you a refresher on pharmaco each module, pharmacokinetics, pharmacogenomics, pharmacodynamics, um, anticholinergic burden, um, sed sedation, uh, long QT syndrome. Uh, and then it gives you a lot of case studies mm -hmm. on application of, 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 that, of your knowledge and applying Medwise, how to use the tool and then there's an exam at the end. So it is, um, that's all included to access. There's not an additional cost for that CE or anything, but we feel it's essential just to give an established baseline of use. So, because if you in interpret the tool wrong, um, you could you know, cause harm. So we wanna make right. sure everyone's at, a, at a, the same starting point when they, when they um, have access to it. So yeah, so we're hoping to get as many um, certified Medwise advisors across the country as we possibly can. Um, the pharmacists that um, have uh, gone through the training and are, and are performing med sa medication safety reviews for their uh, patients are, um, are, are passionate about using it. Mm -hmm. And I think it, again, it's, it's one of those, you know, how do we align payment to, for pharmacists to provide this service is essential because it, then that helps enable a, a, a pharmacy to allocate uh, staff resources to incorporate this in, you know, into the pharmacy and workflow as a service. Um, but at the end of the day, every single patient should not be receiving medications without, without knowing that what their risk score is related to adverse drug events and making sure that the medications they're taking uh, are safe. And effective. And, and on that, um, is this product, is it just for community pharmacies? Do you see this as, I was just thinking like, this could be a great kind of um, facilitator for collaborative practice um, opportunities with physicians offices. Um, I don't know, are they, is this being used outside of the community pharmacy? Uh, what other? Um, yeah practice settings? Yeah, no, that's a great question. So um, right now the tool, the, the Medwise tool is embedded into the prescribed wellness uh, software system because that way we can pull, um, we pull pharmacy claims data into the system and it streamlines the medication reconciliation process that you need to do to conduct a med safety review. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, outside of that, what we are, uh, working on is we have a relationship with ASHP where we're exploring how do we connect and use Medwise inside the walls of a health system because they don't have your traditional pharmacy management systems, right? So we'd have to um, hook into like an electronic health record or with the system that their work they use to dispense out of the pharmacy in, inside the walls. So it's a little different model. Um, it's not just a turnkey, turn it on and go. And so we're exploring and we're doing proof of concepts with ASHP to see how we could integrate it into a um, health system. And then, you know, to your question as well, and looking at ambulatory care or pharmacists that, you know, are working in medical groups or um, et cetera, if they don't have a pharmacy dispensing system to, you know, they're not dispense and not, you know, non-dispensing um, setting. Um, how can we use uh, Medwise to, you know, facilitate work within in that group as well? So we are, we have um, done some work with ASCP um, on long-term care. How do we the long-term care pharmacists? So we're still doing work on different practice settings on really workflow and integration. Um, and, and I guess the worst case scenario is that a pharmacist has to conduct a, a manual med, med rec, or you know, maybe you have your um, pharmacy staff 
pull together all of the medication lists because you also want to take in OTCs, herbal supplements to right. assess the patient's total risk um, for an adverse drug event with everything that they're taking. Uh, so uh, we're still working on um, those different practice settings, but I think to your point, 100%, um, you know, a patient shouldn't be discharged without having a, a, a medication safety review on all of their new meds, because then you could fix it before they leave, right? So they don't come back um, with an adverse drug event um, they, and get readmitted. And so we're working on those models to see what we could do, what we can do. But I think also more, most importantly is how do we leverage community pharmacy to make and create new relationships with physician offices or with health systems or, you know, and on that local level with self-insured employer groups mm -hmm. that they could, they could then um, provide a medication, provide medication safety reviews for all of their high-risk patients. So we um, really want to help empower the community pharmacists and and then we're working on how do we um, put MedWise in other, you know, all other practice settings where pharmacists are have direct patient care as well, um, because the power behind it um, is the same applies anywhere. Yeah, and I was just thinking, like, um, just personally, this kind of topic is has become. Um, it's become more personal to me just being in the sandwich generation and obviously this can help anyone across the board that has um, chronic conditions and lots of different medications but when you're looking at your parents that are getting older and now that I have um, you know a, a closer relationship with the pharmacy community and under really understand what pharmacists do I see so many of you know even with our parents and my friends parents that some of the things that are going on with them, I just, I know it's just, it's too many medications and um, they need some help, but it, it's, you know, I've been doing my own personal advocacy work and trying to get them to talk to pharmacists to kind of, to work out um, some of these issues. So I'll never forget, um, it was a video that was done. I don't know if it was APHA, um, but when we're talking about um, doing the, I guess it's the, the med recs or just, you know, working with the patients, look at all their medications and figure out what's going on. But they took a patient was taking like 26 medications and got them down to 10. And that was just so mind blowing to me that they were just adding on more medications were just added on for side effects of the other medication when really a comprehensive review needed to be done um, yeah. to get them on the right track. And they were so much better. And also I think that person was putting them in the blender, but that's a whole other issue. <laughs> oh, <laughs> they're, no. they're making like a protein shake with all the medications <laughs> and throwing them in at the same time. Oh and no, I've never able, heard of such a, oh, that's, oh, that's Yeah, true. the pharmacist was able to work with them, cut their medications in half. Um, but I think so many people could just benefit from the knowledge and expertise that pharmacists have. And then having this tool on top of that, I think it would just change the experiences for so many patients. So, so a couple of things, that. a couple of things, Aaliyah. So one, we have a friends and family program that I'll send you information and we could, um, our call center pharmacists can provide a med safety review um, until we get some pharmacists in Maryland providing safety reviews. We can, we can um, provide that for some of your family members. So I'll make sure I send that to you. Yeah, so we have that program. Um, so we can we can do that. And um, related to polypharmacy, it so so that's the other thing. So I talked about you know the analogy of a horse moving to a car. So now we've got you know antiquated drug drug interaction systems, and now we have Medwise. Mm -hmm. um, the the other issue that that Medwise now and why it's so important is the epidemic, we're really in it. We have an epidemic of polypharmacy use in yeah. this country. And it's really, um, you can, I, they, there's, you know, studies show that's attributed because we're the only country that has direct to consumer advertising as well. Mm -hmm. And so um, they, I mean, let me have some statistics for you because um, 
it, it, so for every dollar we spend, we spend another dollar fixing the problem that the medica medication caused. So every dollar, the you know, so there's waste there. Mm -hmm. um, the, uh, the Loan Institute, L-O-W-N Institute, put out a uh, document specifically on polypharmacy. And their statistics show that um, they talk about medication overload, polypharmacy, that it will lead to the premature death of more than 150 older Americans over the next 10 years and will contribute to more than 62 million hospitalizations in older adults. So just That's that bad. alone, yeah. you know, is, is frightening. And, and statistically from 1994, 14% of the population took five or more meds. And in 2014, so 10 years later, 49% of patients took more than five meds. Wow. So, I mean, and those are, that's still, that's 2014. So those numbers are um, not real time, but it's just um, one third of adults take more than five medications. Um, and, you know, it's, if, a pill for every ill really is our society. And mm -hmm. one thing that MedWise does is exactly what you said. It helps um, identify where did, that deprescribing can occur um, and to you know avoid the interactions on a metabolic level of those medications that are preventing another one from working or another one from activating um, can, um, it, you know, to me, uh, it drives efficiency Mm -hmm. of the pharmacist to be able to address these, have this information at their fingertips now that they didn't, they don't have um, and do it uh, in a much easier, more efficient way than having to go look up, you know, grab, you know, your different resources and do mm -hmm. an analysis and stuff. So, you know, when pharmacists are like, how do I put this in my workflow? Think of it as a, a more efficient way to take care of patients because now you have you're empowered because you do have information at your fingertips right. you've never had ready. before. Yeah. Ready. So, yeah. So, yeah, the epidemic, you know, but polypharmacy, 100%. Um, and, and the other thing, too, though, one of our, one of the things that Medwise does is you can have a patient that's only taking four medications, but they're competing with each other um, and not allowing, you know, one to work or uh, um, one to be activated. And that can be just as severe or cause, you know, a potential adverse drug event as someone taking over 10 meds. Right. So even that number of meds, but um, looking at, you know, that meta again, those metabolic pathways um, or cumulative effects of medications on how, um, you know, you compound um, you know, and you, if you have 10 medications and six of them have uh, drowsiness as a side effect, that's, that's not good. It's right. a problem. <laughs> so how do we look at that cumulative effect and see it so we can do something about it? So that's what MedWise does. It's, I'm just, uh, I can't tell you how um, exciting it is to, you know, have the opportunity to work for Tabula Rasa and get this out to the profession and get this in the hands of pharmacists um, and so they have this information at their fingertips. So I'm hoping, we're hoping that, you know, we get through this COVID wave, get everyone yes. vaccinated because pharmacists are vaccinating patients yes. um, all over the country and a no, new wave, you know, the age um, is being lowered, what, to eight, uh, 16 years old on Other April 18th. Here comes more. So let's get them through, you know, get pharmacists through this and and then um, let's let's um, empower them with this amazing tool. Yes, so, I'm super excited about it. And another thing too is um, I'll, I'll mention this. So I mentioned the risk score briefly. So mm -hmm. we have the ability, um, our system uh, looks at the information that I've you know talked about, anticholinergic effects and sedation and um, the way drugs are metabolized um, through competitive inhibition. And essentially, we look at um, the um, ingredients of a drug and their potential um, uh, severity of um, these factors that cumulatively can cause an adverse drug event. Mm -hmm. And we assign a numeric value to medications that have these issues. And we've... As, through that, we're, we have come up with a risk score, a way to risk stratify a patient population 
so that we can identify if they're at high or very high risk for an adverse drug event. And so um, a couple of months ago, we rolled out a program, and this is something that we're going to um, uh, uh, send to uh, send to you so your team can, we're going to use, you know, from a marketing perspective, that all prescribed wellness pharmacies today have ask, ac um, access to the risk score today in okay. prescribed wellness. And so we really want pharmacists to start there. Um, they have to watch a two minute video so they know what the risk score is, <laughs> what it means. Um, and then they, we can turn on their risk score and then they can see all of their patients that are at high risk. Mm -hmm. Now, now the pharmacist will say, well, what do I do now? <laughs> right? Get so, your advisor <laughs> certificate. <laughs> so yeah, so they can become a Medwise advisor, but um, even in the next few months, you know, they don't have time to go through the online training or, you know, give them time to do that. We have our calls. I mentioned we have, we have pharmacists in our call center that the pharmacist can then refer or um, um, educate the patient mm -hmm. that they have an opportunity and need to receive a med safety review if that okay. community pharmacist can not provide it so that our call center can provide that in partnership with the community pharmacist uh, and so but we you know we need the uh, pharmacists uh, patients trust their community pharmacist yeah. and having that recommendation come from their community pharmacist uh, we do have that opportunity as a way to a pathway to get the pharmacist going i guess right so here's your risk score let's look at if you have high risk patients um, a way to help them now is you know have our pharmacist call, uh, colleagues in the call center um, provide that med safety review, and then uh, our you know our, we would then love to in the meantime get that pharmacist trained using Medway so they can conduct the med safety reviews themselves. Awesome. So we do have that as well. Okay, we'll be uh, sure to be yeah. sure to highlight that. Good. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's really, what's really great too is um, the risk score levels, um, I should say the risk levels, um, whether, you know, they're at low, medium, high, or very high risk for an adverse drug event, um, that same risk score is also um, in the um, Pioneer RX system. So the Pioneer Pharmacy Management System. So they're our first pharmacy management system that will also be, be displaying the risk score as well. Okay be available in prescribed wellness and pioneer um, to start but ultimately someday we want to get to where our pharmacists um, are getting paid to provide med safety review proactively or i should say prospectively before the medication gets dispensed that's mm -hmm. that's kind of the utopia right um right right now we're you know we have to live in the providing okay here's your current state now let's fix it so it'd be great to get to the, let's not have to fix it. Let's right. make changes before we get there. So anyway, we'll get there. Um, but it's going to take, we need partners like you to make those changes and to make um, that possible. So um, even from a policy perspective, uh, we are working on how do we uh, incorporate from a, on a state level medication risk um, mitigation mm -hmm. strategies where for the state, you know, look at state Medicaid, if you empowered and that you look at our publications, I think we had 56 publications last year, um, where we show this amazing, strong return on investment related to cost savings by a pharmacist providing medication safety reviews, mm -hmm. um, we could save the state a lot of money. Uh, from a state Medicaid perspective by, by providing um, medication safety reviews, leveraging the expertise of a pharmacist. So those are, you know, additional conversations um, we can have together on, you know, how do we make changes um, uh, from a, a state perspective that uh, drives, drives use, yes. Okay. Uh, yes, looking forward to that conversation. We are just about at our time. Um, so yeah. really, thank you for um, for all of this information. And I think as we continue to roll this out, um, we're definitely going to generate some more interest. But what I usually do um, before we close out, I do ask our um, our, our guest 
of what you do to support your wellness? My own personal wellness? Yes. <laughs> so, I, um, I, so I used to be an avid runner and um, not so much anymore. Now I'm an avid jogger walker. Okay. <laughs> so on a beautiful, on beautiful days, like yesterday, before the rain came in today, um, I took the, my two Jack Russell Terriers and we went on a three mile uh, run walk. And so that's part of my wellness. Um, I've also, what's interesting, um, I've also, my husband and I have really um, gravitated to trying to incorporate um, a uh, vegan meals into mm -hmm. our work week. Um, we're not 100% vegan, but uh, looking at how, you know the vegan diet and how to incorporate more plants, uh, plant-based food awesome. into our yeah. diet. So we've been doing that. So I can I have you know my chickpeas and sweet potato and Brussels sprouts for lunch. <laughs> okay. I like to call. And them then you know I I guess another I I think you know from a wellness perspective and also there's it's all about balance, right? Uh, especially, you know, the challenge um, as you, um, you know, Leah and your work, it, the job never ends. And so how do you make sure that you're able to turn it off and, and have some downtime or that give yourself that thinking time, that creative thinking time to really think through issues where it might spark an idea. So I, I really try to make sure I, you know, you do give yourself some time to rest um, when you can. Uh, so I think, and I think that's really important, you know, from a wellness perspective, um, so that you don't um, uh, lose your, um, you know, I think with anything with COVID has taught us how important family is, right? <laughs> so, so making sure that you have that balance incorporated as part of part of wellness is, I think, is key as well. That's awesome. Oh, and I'm getting my J and J vaccine tomorrow, so that's oh, another okay. wellness check mark. <laughs> yes, yeah, I'm registered, but um, I don't know yet. Um, I got I got my appointment on um, Monday. I got it. I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> the photos on social media of people with their cards has been a very interesting. Uh, you know, uh, isn't that funny? It, I know everyone's it, like. like what? I got my this card. I voted. You know, it's all kind of. I know. I know. They have. It's almost like a their their COVID button is like yes. you know, their vote their vote sticker. <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> okay, Mindy. Well, thank you so much. And um, again, uh, Mindy Smith, Vice President of Professional Affairs for Tabla Rasa Healthcare. Thank you for being with us. And if you'd like to follow Mindy on social media, she is on Twitter and linked in as Mindy D. Smith. So thanks again for listening to the Farmcast. We'll catch you next time. Thanks, Aaliyah. Mm -hmm. Thanks for watching and please be sure to like, subscribe and rate uh, the podcast on all major podcast platforms. We look forward to dropping more great conversations and of course, sponsorship opportunities are available. Just contact us at MPHA. Thanks.